Hi, my name's Andromeda, my pronouns are she, they, and today we'll be discussing the queer publishing industry in Germany's Weimar era. The increasing numbers of printed materials on homosexuality available in the last few decades of the 19th century played a part in fueling the development of Germany's gay scenes. With the rise of a mass reading public, there was an emerging interest in information on same-sex desire. Important to the development of a queer publishing scene, in 1864, Karl Heinrich Ulrichs won an early censorship case in the Leipzig District Court, which laid the groundwork for the publication of material dealing with homosexuality as long as it had scientific value. Additionally, with some exceptions, the Weimar Constitution banned censorship, allowing for printed materials regarding sexuality and gender identity to be published. Max Spohr's Press in Leipzig was an early company to focus on sexological topics. Publishing Hirschfeld, Sappho, and Socrates in 1896, and between 1898 and 1914, publishing over a hundred books and brochures on homosexuality, as well as the WHK's Yearbook for Intermediate Sexual Types. The rapid expansion of the queer publishing scene in Berlin took place around the same time as the explosion of gay and lesbian social clubs across Germany. The pioneer of this expansion was Karl Schultz, who established a new press in Berlin and published the first issue of Friendship in August 1919. It consciously addressed both gay men and lesbians from all social classes, and it worked to extend its readership to new corners of the country. The magazine appeared weekly, and thanks to the lifting of censorship, it was openly hung in the windows of newspaper stands and kiosks all around Berlin. The magazine offered education, advice, and entertainment. On the pages of friendship, one could find short stories, essays, and poems. Queer individuals were invited to write letters, engage in debates, and contribute pieces themselves. They also found hints in the magazines for how to meet other like-minded friends. By its second week, it was running advertisements for local gay and lesbian bars. In 1923, however, it had to stop publication due to a combination of legal attacks, financial difficulties, and the hyperinflation that occurred that year. However, this magazine proved that there was a market for materials written for homosexuals, and other publications soon followed. Many publications soon joined this market. Friedrich Ratzewit, founder of the BFM, started his own magazine in early 1923, The Pages for Human Rights. In 1924, he started new titles to target specific audiences, and in September of that year, he established The Girlfriend the first magazine to aim specifically at lesbians. It was soon followed in 1925 by the Friendship Paper, aimed specifically at a male audience. Ratzewitz Press also printed a gay literary and entertainment magazine called The Island. He even tried to establish a magazine for transvestites entitled The Third Sex, in the early 1930s, although only four issues of this magazine ever appeared. There was also an attempt to establish an independent lesbian magazine 
entitled The Pages of Ideal Female Friendship. The magazine's founder, Sally Engler, hoped that it would kickstart a new organization for women called the Ladies' Club or Readers of the Pages of Ideal Female Friendship. Both the magazine and the club proved short-lived, however, but Engler went on to write many pieces for the other lesbian magazines during the rest of the decade. In 1928, the new friendship, attempting to emulate the popularity of Schultz's friendship, appeared. It was joined by a magazine addressing lesbians called The Love of Woman, and The Bachelor Girl a little later. Because they were printed by the same press, The Love of Women and The New Friendship reproduced a lot of the same articles and used many of the same authors. The Love of Women's print run was limited, probably never exceeding 10,000 copies. Unfortunately, towards the end of the 1920s, the queer publishing scene began to be widely affected by the rising conservatism in Germany at the time. The biggest hit to the queer publishing scene came in 1926, when conservatives succeeded in passing the Law to Protect Youth from Trash and Smut, which targeted publications that were considered immoral and aesthetically worthless. Publications affected by this law were not allowed to be sold publicly, effectively destroying business. The queer publishing scene, of course, came under heavy fire. One of the first queer magazines to be affected by this law was The Girlfriend. Many others soon followed, leaving publishers largely with two options to apply self-censorship to their publications, to avoid making it on the list of restricted publications, or to sell by subscriptions only, severely limiting revenue. By 1933, the queer publication industry was all but destroyed. Despite the destruction of this industry, by rising censorship and conservatism across Germany, these publications still made a major impact on public attitudes and the lives of queer individuals during the era. Scientific publications often succeeded in contributing to discussions and positive public attitudes. While many of the publications geared towards entertainment contributed to discussions increased self-acceptance, and contributed massively to the growth of queer urban scenes and social clubs. Next time, we'll discuss the queer literature and art of the Weimar era. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned some valuable queer history, and I'll see you all in the next video.